Hey, what's up guys? Bobby here once again, and I want to welcome you back to the final Highlander review of the ser of this series. Um, and today I'm going to be reviewing Highlander The Search for Vengeance. Now, Highlander The Search for Vengeance is actually the final um, movie, so to speak, in the Highlander saga. Um, it came out shortly after Highlander The Source, and it's actually a Japanese anime film. And to be perfectly uh, honest, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I watched it actually this morning. Um, I downloaded it on my computer, I believe about a year ago, and I just now got around to watching it. I've just been busy, you know, watching other movies and work and martial arts and everything, you know, so now got around to watching it. Perfect timing, considering the fact that I uh, wanted to review all the Highlander films and saga, you know, the Highlander saga. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well made. I really enjoyed the animation and the music. Overall, I was, I was very impressed with it. And to be honest, I like anime. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of anime. Um, I like stuff like Dragon Ball Z, uh, Gundam Wing I liked, Ronin Warriors, Sailor Moon. Um, so yeah, I, I like anime. I'm just not a huge, huge fan. You know, I'm not obsessed with anime, but... There's nothing wrong with that, you know. So, but anyway, um, Highlander: The Search for Vengeance um, actually takes place in the future. I think 2000 and like uh, 2060 or 2160 or something. It takes place way in the future, um, and basically the world has been wiped out by this virus. So, like Highlander: The Animated Series, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting. And see, that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about this movie is they make references to the other, um, you know, uh, films and stuff and other things in the franchise, which I really liked about that. Um, so basically the world got wiped out by this virus and the story follows a gentleman by the name of Colin McLeod. And Colin McLeod was a warrior who basically he traveled all over the world searching out this guy. And I can't remember the guy's name. I wrote, I didn't write it down in my notes, but I forget the guy's name. I think it was like Octave. No, it wasn't Octavius. Um, it was something with an O, which was a change because in all the previous incarnations of Highlander, except for the Raven and the TV series, and the uh, the shit, aka the Source, or the raping, aka the Raven, as I like to call it, Highlander the raping, because it raped the franchise. Um, there, sorry, all the villains' names started with K. So this one started with O. Like I said, I forget the guy's name. Um, but basically, yeah, he, uh, Colin has been chasing this guy throughout time because he killed his wife long, long time ago, back in the, in the days of the Roman Empire. Um, because his wife actually betrayed Colin and then she ended up getting killed. You know, the guy ended up betraying her and getting killed. And um, Colin made a promise to her that he would not seek vengeance, which he lied because he's been going through time trying to find this guy kill him. Excuse me. So where the story picks up, it's in the future. And basically Colin is like a bounty hunter because he's going around killing other immortals while trying to find this guy. Um, but little does he know, the guy that's paying him all this money to kill these other immortals is the guy that he's after. So yeah, basically he goes around and he kills other immortals and takes their heads and takes them to where he's supposed to and he gets paid. Um, and like I said, this takes place in the future. It takes place in New York City, but it's a post-apocalyptic New York City. Excuse me. Um, so the world... It's basically ruled by this guy that Colin is after. He basically turned after this uh, the, this virus wiped out the world, which he created, which we find out later in the movie. Um, this guy, you know, kind of took over the world. Now everybody follows him, and you know, he he built a uh, like a utopian paradise for himself and no one else. So there you go. But basically, Colin is working for this guy, and he doesn't even know it. Damn, guys, I'm sorry yawning too much um so as the movie begins like i said colin kills this immortal and he takes the head to him and then he uh he's let go 
and he goes into New York City. He try like these guys try to kill him that work for the bad guy, but he ends up escaping and goes out on his own. And he meets this woman, and this woman um, looks just like his wife. So he gets reminded of his wife and other women through his lifetime that reminded him of his wife um, because it's always haunted him. And you know she he finds out that you know she's a prostitute and you know she wants to give him a free one and stuff, but he says no. I don't want that, and he ends up, they actually end up joining forces together because she's part of the rebels that are going to go fight the bad guy. Once Colin finds out that the bad guy is this guy that killed his wife, he tries to go stop him, um, and they break into his, you know, his, his little paradise that he made for himself, and they find out that the virus was orchestrated by him and, and was created by his group of scientists. And they, you know, they try to, they get some of the vaccine because a lot of the people in the city are infected with this virus. And they can't go outside. You know, they, they can't go, they eventually stay underground in the subway. So they find out that these people, you know, orchestrated this whole virus. And they go and they steal the vaccine, which they plan to use on the, the, the people of the city. But, you know, they can't save everybody, you know. So they escape. You know, Connor, or, yeah, Connor, Colin, um, meets this guy, and they have a little fight. You know, and then he has flashbacks, you know, again. And then, again, you know, they did the flashbacks very well, you know, referencing the original Highlander movies and stuff like that, which was great. So they have a brief fight, and, you know, they leave, and then they come back for the final showdown with the Rebels. And Colin, actually, the woman that he falls for gets killed, and he ends up defeating the villain, and he is actually, you know, at peace with himself because he accomplished what he wanted to do, and he moves on. So that's basically the movie. It's very basic, very simple, and, you know, kind of like the original Highlander film. You know, it's a pretty simple movie. Um, it's only 85 minutes. It's very short, but it was good. It was very good. Like I said, I was very impressed with this movie. Um, like I said, I do like anime. But I really like the animation in this film. I really enjoyed the style that they use. I don't, I don't, uh, uh, God. Sorry, that's what happens when you work all night. Um, like, I don't know what the style they use is called. Like I said, I'm not really big into anime. But I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the look of the film. You know, and the music I thought was really good too. They use a, you know, type of rock type of score. And I really enjoyed that. Um... You know, overall, the movie was very, very good. I'm definitely going to try to track the DVD down because I definitely want to add it to my Highlander collection. So the reviews, I will agree with the reviews on this one because a lot of the reviews said the film was very good, you know, and I really liked it. Now, most of them said that they were better than the sequels. But, I mean, the sequels, you know, to each his own. I mean, I've, I enjoyed pretty much all the Highlander sequels. That's just me. Um, but, you know, I've really enjoyed this one as well. And this one isn't really a sequel. This is just kind of an animated movie, you know. But, yeah, again, I really enjoyed the, the entire film. You know, I really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, they do make references to the original Highlander saga. Um, first of all, the character, the main character, Colin, wears a trench coat that looks exactly like the one that Connor wore in the first movie. Also, it takes place in New York City, which the first film did. Um, and the guy, Colin, he has this um, his, his guardian, this guy that watches over him and taught him. So obviously a reference to Sean Connery's character. Excuse me. Um, there you go. And also, um, Jim Burns is in this. Jim Burns, like I said before played Joe Dawson on the television series, and he actually voices two characters in this film, which referenced Joe, which was great. Um, the first character that he voices is named Rudy, and he owns a bar, so obviously a reference to Joe's bar. And the se second character he voices is a doctor, coincidentally named Doc, and he actually has a wooden leg. He has a prosthetic leg like Jim Burns has. So I was really happy with that. I was really happy that they, that they referenced... You know, not only the original Highlander film, but they referenced the the TV series as well, which was really cool. And, of course, that went up a few notches in my book. So, yeah, I mean, I really liked how they, they paid tribute to the original, you know, movies and, and the TV series. I really liked that. And the animated series, you know, the post-apocalyptic setting comes from the animated series. 
So I really like that. I really enjoyed this movie. I would, like I said, I'm definitely going to pick the DVD up when I find it. Um, like I said, they do a lot of flashbacks in this movie, which was really good. I really enjoyed that. Um, first of all, the movie opens where um, Colin is in battle with the Clan McLeod. He's part of the Clan McLeod. And he gets killed in the battle. And then they're burying him and they say, you know, he came to us with no name. But he has a name now. He is he is a McLeod. He is Con. He's Con. Uh, bleh, bleh. I was gonna say Connor. He's Colin McLeod of the Clan McLeod. And then the movie goes jumps into the future, and we see Colin. And he's walking, and they like they did in the movie and the series. The immortals can sense each other. So Colin senses an immortal, and he goes to fight him. And instead of a sword, this guy actually has a chainsaw, which I thought was really cool. It was really interesting. It was different. You know, it was different from what we have seen before so Colin you know he's like you're not the one that I want and this guy's like you know I've been around a thousand years kid you know you can't beat me and uh, Colin kills this guy and it was really cool because like he decapitates him but his head doesn't fall off right away like he keeps moving and he's like wait what and then his head falls off and he keeps talking and then he receives the quickening which was cool so yeah it was different you know it was something pretty different and then we go into the credit sequence so it was like a pre-credit sequence and then, yeah, Connor, like I said, he's like a bounty hunter, so he goes to get paid by these guys. He drops off the head, you know, and then we enter a series of flashbacks, and we find out that um, during the time of the Romans, you know, he met this woman. I think her name is Moya, and that became his wife, and he loved her to death. And then she betrayed him and set him up against the villain, and then the villain betrayed her. And killed her, so Colin, you know, swore vengeance, you know, I'll get you, and, you know, from this day forth, you know, and then, we, like I said, we go into a series of flashbacks, there's one where he meets up with this, the villain, and they have, like, a joust battle, and then, um, they, like, they never showed this on any of the other incarnations of Highlander, but Colin actually gets, like, how, you know how Jason gets killed in Friday the 13th, the final chapter, where he gets the machete in his head? That's kind of what they do here because they're jousting and the villain, like, he, he goes up top and he, like, cuts him in the head. And there's, like, a whole, like, cut in his head. And it's anime, so, I mean, there's going to be blood and guts and stuff like that. But he doesn't die. And, you know, they never, they never did that on the TV series or the movies. I mean, the TV show, they really couldn't. But the movie, they really couldn't either. They probably would have got an X rating or something, you know. So, he's, like, bleeding and he actually, like, stumbles, and he ends up in Stonehenge, which was cool. And Stonehenge, in this incarnation, is, like, holy ground. And, you know, the immortals can't fight on holy ground. So, the bad guy comes up. He's like, you know, holy ground, you know, I'll get you next time. And then his guardian comes and explains to him, because he doesn't know what he is. You know, he just knows that he, he keeps dying, and he comes back. He doesn't understand what he is. So his guardian tells him, you know, you're immortal, this is what you gotta do, blah, blah, blah. And the guardian, like I said, I forgot what his name is, but he's actually voiced by an actor named Scott McNeil. And for those that follow anime will know who Scott McNeil is. He's done voices for a lot of different anime and um, American cartoons as well. He's a very, very big name voice actor. And he also played um, Bone Steel on Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. Um, the live action show. And then he also did uh, some of the voices on the 2003 Ninja Turtles. Um, but he's done a lot of different voices for cartoons, which is really cool. Um, so that's actually one of the voice actors that I like. Because um, like I said, I've seen him in a lot. I've heard his voice in a lot of different stuff. So yeah, Scott McNeil does the voice of the Guardian. Whoops. And he has a pretty distinct voice too. So you can tell when it's him. Um, so yeah, they, uh, they have these series of flashbacks. Um, and then later on in the movie... Um, there's another flashback where they're in Rome and they're fighting, which was pretty cool because there's like a, um, they fight, they fight, blah, 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 blah. they fight and then they leave and then it goes through the different times that they fought, uh, Con or Colin and the big, I keep calling him Connor. <laughs> um, so we get to see the whole sequence where he's with the clan McLeod and he dies and then he comes back and like in the first movie, the clan McLeod's like, oh, this is witchcraft, blah, blah, blah. And then this guy actually steps in, like in the first movie, and says, you know, he's our brother. He was part of our clan. We don't know what brought him back, but he will always be a McLeod, and they banish him and stuff. 
So you're like, again, chock full of references to the other incarnations of Highlander, which is, again, which is great. You know, they paid respect to the Highlander franchise, which, again, is awesome. Um, and then they fight in Japan, which is really cool because, like, they go in this, um, I don't know what they're, I don't know what they call houses in Japan, but they go in there and it's, like, burning and they're fighting in there, which is pretty cool. And then they go to, like, um, World War II, they're, like, in France in World War II, another reference to the TV series of France, and they're fighting on this plane, which is pretty cool for a little bit. So, yeah, really good fights and stuff, and... In terms of the other action sequences, when they're going to search for the vaccine, they, um, they're going through the sewer, and, um, there's, like, a giant alligator in there, so Connor, or, see, I did it again, <laughs> Colin, sorry, Colin, um, kills the alligator, and he cuts his head off, which is pretty cool, and it reminded me of Resident Evil 2, for those that have played the Resident Evil 2 video game, there's a part in the game where, you're in the sewers, and um, this giant alligator, this giant yeah, zombie alligator, comes out of the sewage disposal, and you have to kill it. And that just reminded, for some reason, it reminded me of Resident Evil because the animation was similar, and the way that they killed the the creature and stuff. So yeah, it was really cool. You know, I really like that. And then, like, when they go find the vaccine, these troops come, and they're fighting these different troops and stuff. So it was really cool. Um, and then, like, towards the end, they have um, Connor and the villain. God, did it again. God damn it. Colin and the villain have a brief fight, and then Colin gets knocked out. Because as we see in the flashbacks, every time he fought the bad guy, he didn't die. He just got the shit kicked out of him. And, like, his guardian was saying, you know, that this is because you're not thinking straight. You know, you're consumed by hatred. You're consumed by vengeance. You know, you can't live your life this way, you're immortal, blah, blah, which is stuff they talked about on the TV series, so there you go, you know, again, more references. So they have, like, a brief fight, and Colin gets his ass kicked, and then they have a final fight, you know, and then he says, you know, throughout the movie they say, you know, there can be only one, and it was really cool how they did it, because he, like, slashed, and he slashed through his sword and everything, and the way that he killed him was really cool, and then, um... They, uh, the quickening that they did wiped out the virus and brought back, you know, humanity and stuff. But yeah, the girl that, that, uh, Colin falls for, that reminds him of his wife, she gets killed. And then at the end, she tells him, you know, now you're free, you know, you can, you know, just make sure that you always remember me and blah, blah, blah. And then his guardian leaves him, you know, he's like, now, now you have a purpose in your life. Because at the end, he just kind of walks off on his own. But he's like, you know, now you have a purpose in your life. You know, you can do whatever you want. You're free from this guilt and this hatred and this anger. So, you know, do make, you know, make good decisions, make good choices. You know, it's farewell, Highlander. So, yeah, really cool. Um, in terms of the other characters, there's, like, this little kid in the movie. And his name is Joe. So, I guess that was supposed to be a reference to Joe Dawson or something. Because he helps out McLeod. And it's just, it's just cool, you know, cool characters. Um, like I said, Jim Burns does the voice of two different characters. And at the end of the movie... They're together, which was cool. And he used two different voices, which was which was pretty cool. But yeah, the ending, there's like this battle sequence between um, the bad guy's army and, and the good guys, the rebels, which was cool because they're like blowing up tanks and shootouts and stuff. So really cool. You know, I really enjoyed this. You know, it is violent, you know, like a lot of anime. It is, you know, can get pretty graphic. Like I said, like a lot of anime that I've seen, you know, can get pretty violent. Like uh, another one I like is Fist of the North Star. That one's, you know, pretty graphic, pretty violent stuff. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie overall. Um, I know this review is going to be a little bit shorter, but that's okay. But, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this. Um, I really liked the music, the animation, uh, the voice acting I thought was really good. I liked the story a lot. And I liked, the thing I really enjoyed was that it referenced, you know, the movies. It referenced the TV show. It referenced the cartoon. I liked how they paid tribute to Highlander, the, the, the whole franchise. And I think this was a good way to end the franchise because, like I said before this, you know, you had Highlander Season 6, then you had Highlander the Raven, then you had Highlander the Source. You had three shitty things, and then you have this, which was really good, and I really liked it, you know. And, I, and again, you know, I will agree with the critics. A lot of the critics said that this was a really good um, animated movie, an anime, it was really good, really well done, and... 
you know, I like I said, I've really enjoyed it. You know, I will agree with the critics on it, and it def I will definitely try to pick it up on DVD. Now, I read online that in Japan they released like a director's cut, which was like ten minutes longer. So if I can find that, that would be great, just to just to check it out. But yeah, overall, I just I really enjoyed this, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I finally saw it. I've been wanting to see it for a while, and I was thoroughly impressed with it. I enjoyed the entire movie. I really liked, again, the animation, the music, the story, the whole, the voice acting. I really enjoyed everything about it. It was, it was definitely felt like Highlander, you know, and it was, and I'm glad that it, it did. I'm glad that they, they tried to make it, and they did. They did make it a part of the series, and it worked out very well. So anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching these series of Highlander reviews. Um, it was a lot of fun to go back and talk about this franchise that I love a lot. Um, it was fun to talk about all the movies and the TV series and the animated series and to check out this anime. Like I said, I'd never seen it before. I really liked it. Um, I do have one more video planned, which I will show off my Highlander home video collection because that's really all I have for now. Um, I do have some of the comics, but I don't know where they're at. i got to go find them, so maybe I'll include them in the video. I'm not sure. But yeah, I really enjoyed these uh, reviews. It was fun to get back to movie reviews and everything. So who knows what's next. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed all these videos. You can you can uh, feel free to go back and watch all of them, all the movie reviews, the TV series by season, the Raven, the animated series. They're all up. So if you want to go back and check them out, feel free. Go right ahead. I hope you guys um, enjoyed me talking about them. So uh, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.